This video is going to introduce the idea of applying transfer learning to generative adversarial networks. Transfer learning is one of the most popular ideas in classification tasks, such as uh, classifying like a dog or a cat, and it hasn't really been applied to generative adversarial networks. If this is developed and successful, it'll be able to save people tons of computation because you could take a pre-trained model from something like OpenAI or DeepMind and just plug and play this pre-trained model into your data set. In addition to saving tons of computation, this will also help you to train GANs on small data sets, which is really useful in application domains such as medical image analysis. So from a high level overview, this is the idea. You have the source domain, which is the original data set such as ImageNet that you train on, and then you transfer this model into some new target. So in the context of GANs, this means it starts out generating ImageNet images, and then it'll transfer and start generating It'll start generating the ImageNet again, but then the discriminator will have the new custom data set and it'll start to mold it into the, uh, to generating this new data set. So this is just a picture showing how transfer learning is used in classification tasks. This is a really popular paper where they uh, repurpose classification layers for the task of object localization. So here are some of the interesting things that the researchers in transfer and GAN study. They want to know the impact of the target domain size, you know, like, if you only have a thousand images in your target domain, will this still work? Then they want to know the distance between the source and the target. So let's say you go from ImageNet, which is pictures of like cats, dogs, and airplanes, stuff like that. And let's say you want to translate transition into uh, like liver lesion images. This is like totally different. So you'd want to see if the distance between these two data sets is going to impact the quality of transfer learning with generative networks. And then again, you want to look at uh, conditional GANs. So conditional GANs are this idea that you can inject a class label to control the GAN output. But similar to transfer learning with regular classification tasks, the label distribution is going to be totally different. So you want to see if there's some way that you can align the labels when you transfer. So this quickly just shows how the DC GAN that does LSUN bedrooms, which is 64 by 64, requires 36 million parameters. Now, 36 million parameters in a deep model means you need a lot of data to avoid overfitting. So evaluating GANs is one of the most difficult things with GAN research. So the researchers in this paper choose to use the uh, Fréché inception distance, which is given here, and an independent Wasserstein critic. So their experiments, they use the improved Wasserstein GAN model, which has uh, ResNet layers in both the generator and the discriminator. They target 64 by 64 images, and they train with a batch of 128 images for 50K iterations. So this table right here shows, uh, you know, they, they test if uh, training the generator only from scratch or just pre-training the generator, and then they do the inverse. They uh, test, uh, you know, pre-training only on the discriminator versus training it from scratch. And then surprisingly, they find that pre-training works, if you're going to only do one or the other, it works better than discriminator. But in all cases, it actually does work best to transfer with both the generator and discriminator. So this picture here kind of gives you an idea of, of how uh, transfer learning in GANs looks. You see uh, from scratch compared to the pre-trained, how it's kind of like a more coherent uh, transition. Now this image uh, shows the transfer process from different source data sets. So they're all transferring into kitchens, but the one on the top is from scratch. I think the one below is from ImageNet. You know, this is just the different data sets that are described in the paper. And this one is a more complete thing that shows uh, the different data sets they test as the source data sets and then the results when they transfer. And this shows more of that. So in conclusion, uh, transfer learning in GANs is a really interesting idea. It can save computation and data. They find that transferring does work well. And additionally, they find that data sets with dense classes, so like maybe a data set that has a bunch of uh, dog breeds would perform better than a data set in the source data set that has like a ton of different things. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more deep learning videos.